Well, today we start our first sermon in the sermon series entitled Royal Pains, where we're going to be looking at leaders that we see in Scripture, good spiritual leaders leading God's people. Some of them are anointed by God, empowered by God, and God specifically tells them what to do and what to say. And these leaders that we're going to be looking at are doing amazing and wonderful things. But the one thing that we see that all human leaders have in common is at one point or another in their leadership, they fail God's people. They make mistakes. They mess up. These mistakes sometimes cost their lives, cost their families' lives, hurts or harms the nation of Israel. And the one thing that we're going to be talking about time and time again is how our whole, our full hope and trust should never be in any one person and any leader. That no matter how good they are, no matter how anointed or empowered by God they are, they're still human beings. And even the best ones, they can fail us. So our hope and trust should never fully be in any human leader. It should only be in God. And I'm doing this because we're leading up to the presidential elections where we will vote on the president for the, the, our president and some governors and some city leaders and all sorts of different leaders uh, in, our, in our country here in the United States. And we're going to be looking week after week after week at how even the best leaders fell us. So as we go to the polls on Super Tuesday, we can go hopefully with hope and peace because our hope, our full hope, is not in any person who is leading us. And so today we start that journey. And you might be saying, well, Pastor, wait a minute, hold time out, Pastor Brandon. You say you're going to be talking about leaders, but Reverend Rachel, she just read to us from Isaiah and uh, Isaiah's call story. Uh, what's going on? And you're right, I, I am reading from Isaiah. Uh, he is this great prophet. He is this wonderful prophet. Uh, he prophesies and gives hope and, and peace to God's people during some dark times. Uh, he tells uh, the kings what to do and what to say, how to govern, and some kings listen to him, some don't. He has these great prophet, prophecies that he foretells the birth and the coming of Jesus Christ. And even Jesus himself quotes from the prophet Isaiah. He is this wonderful very important prophet in the life of Israel, but he was never their king. And I, I read these verses because Isaiah paints this great and wonderful and beautiful picture. The scriptures that we read today said, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord on his throne, and his gown filled the throne room. Now, this is a very important historical time in the life of Israel, the year that King Uzziah died. This is in about the 8th century BCE. And there's a lot of things going on in the, in the life of Israel. You see, King Uzziah, he was, a, he was a good king. He was a faithful king. And he also prospered the nation of Israel during, through his kingship. They expanded their borders. They increased their trade routes. They were very prosperous financially and spiritually. He helped build places of worship for God's people. He did a lot of really amazing things. And his son was, was shaping up to be, to be a good king just like Uzziah. But when a king would die during that time, during that time period, no matter if they were good or bad, it filled the nation full of anxiety. One, because it was, it was a major change. Uzziah, according to our scriptures, ruled for about 52 years. According to the Assyrians' uh, historical records, he ruled about 42 years. But he ruled a long time. People were used to him. And they liked him because they were prosperous and, and he defeated other armies. And so any time that the king would die, everybody in the nation was worried about what would happen next. 
There's this big threat to the north of Israel, of the Assyrian Empire. When Uzziah died, who was strong military, militarily, were they going to come and try to see how strong his son would be? Would they take this opportunity to, to advance and to try to conquer Israel? Israel would be afraid when the king would die. Would, would there be armies coming to try to conquer their lands? Would the Egyptians try to come up from the south? Would the Babylonians would come? Would they try to come from the east? What would happen? They were feel f- fearful, full of wars and unknowns. Would they continue to prosper? Would, would Uzziah's king, would Uzziah's son, would, would he be able to continue the prosperity of, of his father? Would they still have the luxuries and the trades and the prosperity under this new king that they had under the old king? When we look at the presidential debates and what was going on in the life through the anxieties of the ancient people, not much has changed, has it? (laughs) What are world powers going to think of us if there's a change of, of power? If the president rules another four years, will there be economic prosperity like we've had in the past? Will will it continue? Will things get better? Will things get worse? How will the the people be treated by the king, by the president? What laws will he pass to help govern and protect the people of America? The same things that were filled with worry and anxiety and frustrations over are the same things the people during Isaiah's time They were feeling, experiencing the same things. Not much has changed in over 3,000 years. So in the midst of this anxiety, in the midst of this concern, in the midst of not knowing what's going to happen next, Isaiah, the prophet, gets this vision. That the year the king died, I saw the Lord, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh himself. And again and again in the following verses and through this whole image, Isaiah is saying, I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne, the king of hosts. These angels saying, holy, holy, holy is Yahweh. He uses this great and powerful name for God, Yahweh. That same name that God gave Moses through the burning bush when Moses said, God, who do I tell the people you are who's sending me? And God tells Moses, tell the people Yahweh is sending you. The one who is and who was and who is to come. The one who has always been. The one who is now governing everything that is happening in the present. And the one who will continue to be Lord and govern the whole world into the future. I am Yahweh. I sit outside of time ruling and in control. I am the one who created everything that was seen and unseen. I am Him who is sending you, Moses, to the, to the most powerful person in the world to say, let my people go. And here in this vision, we see God telling Isaiah, in the midst of your concern in the midst of your worrying about what's going to happen next look at this vision i am the lord god yahweh i sit on my throne i will not be moved i have been here always i am here now and this is my throne that will continue to the end of time so you might be full of anxiety you might not know what's happened next with this king with this ruler But rest assured, I am the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I am in control now, and I will stay in control into the future. This is the vision that I want to start this whole sermon series out on. And no matter what happens next, we should have this vision of God still on His throne saying, no matter what happens next, I am in control. I am Yahweh, the one who is and who was and who is to come. 
And after this great vision, God says, who's going who's to take this message? And Isaiah says, here I am. I'm going to take this message. And he does. He goes out. And he prophesies. And he preaches. Even when people ignore him. Even when people don't like him. He still has this message that God is in control. Will you take this message with you in the days and weeks leading up to the presidential election? There's a lot of anxiety right now in this presidential election. This is the most anxiety-ridden election that I've ever known, have ever been a part of. I thought 2016 was pretty bad, but this one is its a lot worse. And one of the things that I'm seeing is people dehumanizing the others, dehumanizing the people who are voting differently than they are. The, one who have, the ones who have different politics than them, they call them stupid, fools, idiots, crazy. And if we're not careful, we can let these words start twisting our view on other people who are voting differently than us. We can dehumanize them and not value and not see that they are created in the image of God. So instead of continuing to cause more anxiety, more division, will you accept the call that God has placed on us? This message from Isaiah, that no matter what happens next, well, no matter what happens next, I'm going to have a peace because Yahweh, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He sits on the heavenly throne and He is in control and He is in charge and my hope and my trust is only on Him, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.